Amen. Well, we are kicking off a brand new series today called All Things New, and we are getting into this Bible app. We're going to be going through the different books of the New Testament, and we're kicking it off looking at the book of Galatians. Now, the book of Galatians starts with a rebuke. Now, how many of you like a rebuke as we start the year? None of us do. I hate a rebuke in that. I hate, you know, someone coming out and saying, well, you need to lose some weight, pastor, and that you need to uh, get in better shape. No, no, we want encouragement. And that's what the book of Galatians is. It's a little bit of a rebuke, but also is an encouragement to get back to what's important, to get focused, to stay on track. And so we're going to take a look at Galatians chapter one here today. And the whole book of Galatians is about getting refocused. The church had gotten their eyes off from the gospel, off from Jesus, gotten their eyes onto the works, on trying to obey the law. And here Paul's about to write them a letter and he's going to rebuke them, but he's also going to encourage them to get their eyes on what is important. I think that's so important for us as we start off this year is that we get our eyes in the right direction, that we're not looking at the wrong way. We're not pointing in the wrong direction, but we get our eyes on Jesus and we focus on what is truly important. So Galatians chapter 1 Verse 1 to 10 says this, Paul, an apostle, so not from men nor by a man, but by Jesus Christ and God the Father, who raised him from the dead, and all the brothers and sisters with me, to the churches in Galatia, grace and peace to you from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ, who gave himself for our sins to rescue us from the present evil age, according to the will of our God and Father, to whom be glory forever and ever. Amen. He says this, I'm astonished that you are so quickly deserting the one who called you to live in the grace of Christ and are turning to a different gospel, which is really no gospel at all. Evidently, some people are throwing you into confusion, trying to pervert the gospel of Christ. But even if we or an angel from heaven should preach a gospel other than the one we preach to, let them be under God's curse. As we've already said, so now I say again, if anybody is preaching to you a gospel other than what you accepted, let them be under God's curse. Am I now trying to win the approval of human beings or of God? Or am I trying to please people? If I were still trying to please people, I would not be a servant of Christ. He starts off saying is that he's so astonished. He's astonished that they would quickly desert from the gospel message and they would begin to drift into something that was not the gospel message at all. And I felt that as we're starting off this year is that the word for us is to stay on course. There'll be a lot of distractions that come. There'll be a lot of things that the enemy will want to bring into our life. But if we will stay on course is that and choose not to get off course, not choose to go left or right, but stay on course is that God will accomplish what he desires to do in each of our lives. And so Paul writes this letter to the church of Galatians because they've gotten off course. And it's easy to get off course. A few weeks ago, we went hiking, my family, my sister's family. And so there's, there's eight kids in total. I have four kids. My sister has four kids, eight kids. And we start hiking and the kids are running far ahead of us. And, and start, they keep going and going. And finally, we catch up to them and we're a little tired and we're ready to turn back. And we see this path that looks like it's a different path than we got to where we arrived at. But it looks like it's going to take us right back to where our vehicles are. And so we said, well, let's take this path back. And my brother-in-law said, well, wait, let me just download the app here that's going to tell the trails and where, what direction we're going. I was like, don't put that app away. We're we're on the trails here. We're heading in this direction. So the kids are running ahead again. And so for about 20 minutes, we're chasing after them, chasing. And then we get to this, this ending of the trail. And I can see the ending of the trails there. And I'm thinking my vehicles will be right there. And we come out and to my astonishment, we're back at where we began 20 minutes ago. The trail had completely looped around and I thought I was going in the complete opposite direction of where I ended up. And there my brother-in-law was with his app saying, see, I told you so, that this trail just loops around. And I was like, I can see that now. But sometimes it's like that in our life is that just slowly by slowly, we can get off track. And we can stop doing what God has called us to do and we can get off track. And that's what happened to the church at Galatia. They had people that were surrounding them that were teaching them things that were not in the word of God. It wasn't the true gospel message. It was another gospel. It was about works. It was about trying to earn God's love. It wasn't about God's grace. And that's why Paul writes to them. 
right at the beginning of the book, he says, is that I'm astonished that you're so quickly deserting it, that you've quickly left the gospel message behind and you're going in a completely different route. Now, if someone had asked me on that trail, are you going in the wrong direction? I would have said, no, I'm not going in the wrong direction. But in fact, I was because I wasn't being guided by any map. And the word of God and the gospel message, staying on track with what Jesus at the center of our life, that Jesus is the reason. He's the reason that we follow God. He's the reason that we can be forgiven. And that's what Paul starts off as saying is that Jesus, he forgave us of our sins. He's the reason. He's the, he's the only one that wait, reason why we can have a relationship with God the Father. It's not by works, not by us trying to do what we can do. It's by receiving God's forgiveness through Jesus Christ. And so Paul speaks here is that don't get off track, is that come back, come back to Jesus Christ. Come back and recenter yourself on what is truly important. Because the church had just drifted over time. They'd gone off course. And so he speaks here to the churches that how do we stay on course? What are some of the things that we can use to stay on course this year? Paul speaks to the church. I want to point out three things that really will help us stay on track and stay on course this year. The first is don't accept second best. This is what he says here in verse 6 to 7. He says, I'm astonished that you're so quickly deserting the one who called you to live in the grace of Christ and are turning to a different gospel which really is no gospel at all. Evidently, some people are throwing you into confusion, trying to pervert the gospel of Christ. So some people are throw, trying to throw you into confusion. He, he, he blames it on these false teachers. He speaks to what the issue is that there's other people trying to influence you, other than Jesus, other than the Holy Spirit. And he's saying here is that don't choose second best. He says what you think you're doing is not actually what you're doing. You think you're following the gospel, but what you're actually falling into is a trap of works, which is going to lead you nowhere. And so he pulls them back to Jesus Christ. And he says that Jesus is the reason here, is that focus your relationship on Jesus and how what Jesus did for you on the cross, how he forgave you and how he lives in you. Don't try to do it on your own. Don't try to do it by works. But they've been influenced by other teachers, false teachers that come in, try to teach them a different gospel message, which Paul says is no gospel at all. It's second best. And in our life, sometimes there'll be people that will surround us, people that will come into our lives that don't have the best intentions for us. It'll be second best or third best, but it's not God's best for our life. And so Paul here is speaking, trying to bring them back. He, he says, that, well, it's not good enough that they once knew the gospel message is that, no, we have to come back to the core. We need to come back to Jesus. And so don't accept second best in your life. If we're going to stay on course this year as a church, is that we need to stay grounded in the Word of God and stay grounded in what God is speaking to each of us to do in our lives. Not accepting second best. The enemy will whisper, well, why don't you just try this? Why don't you try this shortcut? But sometimes you'll find yourself, just like I was traveling on that path for a long time, ending up in the same spot, same position. And that can be frustrating. As we begin this year, there may have been things that we'd hoped would have happened in 2021. They never transpired, never happened. And we find ourselves stuck at the same spot over and over and over again. You know, sometimes they say is that doing the same thing over and over again, it's insanity, is that we're looking for a different outcome. But here is Paul saying here is that come back to Jesus. And so the first thing is, is that as we start off this year, is that if we're gonna stay on course, we need to stay focused on our relationship with Jesus. Allowing Jesus to be the center, to be our guide, to allow him to have lordship in our life. And so don't accept second best. That's what the church was doing is that they were allowing another gospel to come in and they were missing out on the best that God had for them, living in the freedom of Jesus Christ. Now, the, the second thing that they did is that we need to do is we need to walk in the spirit. We need to walk in the spirit. He says here in Galatians 5, 16, he encourages the church here. He says this, So I say, walk by the Spirit, and you'll not gratify the desires of the flesh. Is walk in the Spirit. Walk in the Spirit. Now, one of the reasons why Paul was saying to them is that the, this different gospel, he, he was saying to them is that if you try to follow something other than God's plan and God's will, you, you use something and you try to do something in your flesh. 
You're trying to accomplish something in your flesh. And that's why if we're going to stay on course, we need to stay in the spirit. Because the word that Paul uses when he talks about a different gospel, the, the word means that it doesn't add up. And one of the words is it doesn't add up. So it means like if you're trying to do two plus one and you try to get four, it doesn't add up. When you're, you're working with the numbers, he says, you know, it doesn't add, add up. Is that what they're trying to tell you? If you walk in the flesh or you do what you want to do, you're not going to have a great life. It doesn't add up that way. Is we need to follow the spirit. And so, you know, the other week I was in buying some chocolate with my son. You know, it would be chocolate time around Christmas time. And they had a great deal on. And I went to the counter and we put up all the chocolate there. And uh, the, the clerk scanned everything. And then he told us the price. And uh, I thought to myself, no, 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 this is not the combo deal that it says that it's advertised here on the shelf. So I, I told the clerk, I said, you got to just um, maybe it doesn't seem to add up. And, and he, he didn't want to look at the counter. He just thought he scanned everything correctly. He said, no, it adds up. And I was like, no, no, no. You see, this chocolate bar deal, you get three for $4. And I got two of them. That's $8 plus some tax there in there in Canada. We have our tax on everything. But I said, it certainly doesn't come out to $11. And, and he, oh, no, 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 it doesn't. I said, no, 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 why don't we scan it one more time? He scanned it one more time and it came up at the correct price. And uh, I said, oh, thank you. No, and he apologized. I said, it's not a problem at all. But I walked out the store and I said to my son, it's okay to challenge things. It's okay to challenge things. And I said, you, we don't have to be rude about it. But when things don't add up, it's okay to not accept everything. It's okay to not accept it in our life. And you know, and when we are walking according to the spirit and things are not going as we desire them to go in our life, we don't have to accept what the enemy is bringing into our life. We don't have to accept what he's trying to put into our life is that we can rebuke it. We can reject it. And that's the lesson I was trying to teach my son is that you don't have to accept something. If something is wrong, you don't have to accept it. And when we walk by the Spirit is we are expecting God to use us in our lives. We don't have to accept what the enemy is trying to put in our life. Shame, guilt. You know, we don't have to allow disappointment in our life. We don't have to allow him to try to drag us back into the disappointments of last year. Is We are going to stay in the Spirit. And that's why Paul is encouraging the church to walk in the spirit. Just get into the spirit. And I want to encourage you. There's some things in your life that have not been adding up and you just accept it. You, you know what's not correct, but you just accept it. And I want you to really understand today is that if it's not from the spirit, if it's not from God, you don't need to accept it. You can challenge it. You can put your foot down and you can say, I'm not going to receive that in my life. That is not the way things should be going. And that's what Paul's encouraging as we stay on course is that we're going to stay in the spirit. And when things don't add up, we're not just going to accept it. And that's what his issue was with the church at Galatia is that they were just accepting a gospel that didn't add up. And I want to encourage us today is if things are not adding up in our life, don't just accept it. Well, this is just my life. Bad things are just going to happen. No, we are walking by the Spirit and we receive God's promises for this year in 2022. We are receiving the fulfillment of what God desires to do. And so we're going to stay in the Spirit. We're not going to allow the flesh to rule us. We're not going to get into the sins of the past. We're going to allow the Spirit to guide us and to lead us into righteousness, into blessing, into the fullness of what God has for us. And so we're going to stay on course this year. But we got to stay in the spirit. And one of the things is, you know, when things, when the enemy tries to bring something into your life, don't accept it. Don't accept it. Don't accept the sickness. Don't accept what the enemy is trying to do in your life. Bringing discouragement into your life. Rebuke it. Say, I'm in the spirit and I'm staying on course this year. Maybe you can put that in the church and say, I'm staying on course. Even as we declare early on this year is that we are staying on course. We're not getting off course at all. We're going to stay in the spirit. And we're, we're, the last thing is that we're not going to give up. In Galatians 6, here, verse 7 to 10, he says this, Do not be deceived. God cannot be mocked. A man reaps what he sows. Whoever sows to please the flesh, from the flesh will reap destruction. Whoever sows to please the spirit, from the spirit will reap eternal life. Let us not become weary in doing good. For at the proper time we will reap a harvest if we do not give up. Therefore, as we have opportunity, let's do good to all people, especially to those who belong to the family of believers. One of the things the enemy tries to bring into our life is discouragement, that you're going to be stuck in the same spot, 
that the things that happened in the past are just going to repeat itself over and over again in your life. And that's just going to be the course of your life. That's going to be the story of your life. And here is Paul's encouraging the church, don't give up as there's a harvest. And don't be fooled that what we sow, we're going to reap. And so if we've been praying, if we've been seeking the Lord, if we're staying in the spirit, is that we're going to reap everything that God desires to do in our life. But don't give up. There'll be times that the enemy will try to get you just to throw in the towel and just give up. And I want to encourage you today is to stay in the race today. Stay in the race this year. Stay on course. Don't let the enemy get you off course at all. Is that stay focused. Sonia and I, you know, we've done many road trips together. And one of the things that I love to do is kind of, you know, love to see everything when we're going on these trips. And um, one of the trips we were on was going out to the East Coast in Canada. And I just... I just wanted to see everything. And I realized like every time, you know, we go and see something, it's not like a short detour. It's, it's like hours off from the trip. But if we can just stay focused and you know, one of the days Sonny was just like, we're not doing any detours this day. We're just gonna stay focused and we're just gonna go the way of the GPS and just get there. And that's what I wanna encourage us to do is that, you know what? Sometimes there's been things that maybe entice us that we just wanna to go to. Oh, I wanna just see that, I wanna do this. But if God is not calling us to do it, is that don't get off course. Don't waste time this year by going in directions that God doesn't have for you. Is that stay on course and don't give up. Is that keep your eyes focused on what God has for you. I believe God's going to do something great this year as we start off. And so we are staying on focus. We are staying on course this year. God, we are so thankful for what you're about to do in our lives, Lord, as we get started this year, Lord. We are asking you, Lord, take everything from last year, Lord. Take every disappointment, God. Take everything that we wish would have happened but didn't happen, Lord. And God, allow us to give that over to you right now, Lord. And we start off this year fresh, focused on you, God. Putting our eyes on you. Believing for victory. Believing for the best, God. Believing that you're about to accomplish something. Something more than we've ever seen before, God. We are receiving the best, God. We're receiving, Lord, what you desire in our lives, God. And so keep us focused this year, God. Lord, keep all distractions away from us, Lord. Keep our eyes completely on you, Lord. Our eyes focused on what you have for each of us. In Jesus' name.